Hello, my name is Edwin Johnson, uh, and uh, this is a, another episode of uh, Collection Close-Ups. And uh, today, we're going to be taking a look at the fire spitter. This type of uh, mask is not worn like a lot of masks on the front of the face. Instead, the mask is worn over the top of the head. And uh, thus, it's a more of a helmet mask than a face mask or a crest mask. And uh, we could see that uh, the mask is made up of uh, quite a number of uh, different details, you know, that uh, lead us to wonder well, what kind of animal is it trying to represent? Um, is it trying to represent a cow? Is it trying to represent a, um, a wild boar? Is it trying to represent something else? And uh, really, what you have with these fire spitters is an amalgam of uh, different uh, qualities, uh, giving us uh, something that is, uh, that is ferocious in appearance. Uh, that is uh, seen as uh, slightly intimidating. And the reason for that is not to scare the populace, but rather to be more protective. Uh, and uh, so what we have with this, uh, with this uh, particular object is something that is used as a protective device. Now, the reason why something like uh, this would be used as a protective device is during funerary rituals. Um, that uh, funerals are seen in Sinufo culture. And by the way, this is, uh, this is Sinufo from Ivory Coast. Uh, this, uh, that in Sinufo culture, and this is true in a lot of, uh, a lot of different uh, African cultures, that, uh, that funerals are seen as uh, kind of uh, uh, sort of these times of, of, um, of transit, uh, that you are making your way from one state, from the world of the living, to the realm of the dead. And it's during these, uh, during these periods of time when you are in transit that, uh, you can, that the soul becomes incredibly vulnerable. And uh, this a mask like this is used to protect the soul of the deceased in order that they may uh, be carried over into the realm of the ancestors safely and uh, not be attacked uh, by uh, malevolent spirits or even uh, so, you know, sorcerers who uh, practice antisocial magic. So this, uh, so this type of uh, this type of mask is meant to be a little bit ferocious in order to uh, in order to uh, create the appearance of a protective device. Uh, in fact, uh, some of these uh, in some of these examples, not only does the uh, not only does the mask look rather intimidating. Um, but this, uh, this, this intimidating uh, appearance is enhanced with the use of, um, of grass that's placed inside uh, the mouth, the, one of the mouths of the, uh, of the, of the mask. And uh, this, uh, this grass is uh, set on fire, uh, not uh, in a full blaze, but rather in a smolder uh, to create a uh, to create uh, smoke, uh, hence the, the, the term fire spitter is uh, used for these masks. And so you've got to imagine a uh, masquerader with a, uh, with a, with a red, uh, red you know, with a red uh, garments on, uh, with this uh, helmet mask, wearing this helmet mask, and uh, playing drums um, during a funerary ritual in order to uh, serve as a protector of the, uh, of the soul of the recently deceased. 
And uh, now when we're looking at this particular example, um, this is, a, uh, this is a, what we would refer to as a, a Janus uh, fire spitter in that uh, it has uh, faces on either side of the, uh, of the uh, mask. But uh, there are examples, including examples in this collection, that just have one face in one direction and horns going back into the other direction without a face. And uh, so there, there is a, a bit of diversity among these, uh, among these masks. Uh, some that look like this, some have other appearances, some have more horns than tusks. Uh, but uh, these, they all serve the same purpose, which is to protect the dead on their way to the realm, to the realm of the ancestors. Uh, I'm so glad that you could join us for this video. Uh, please uh, like us and uh, subscribe to us on uh, YouTube and please like us on, uh, on Facebook. And uh, please join us once again for another episode of Collection Close-Up.